first of all, and foremost, is you have to look at your demographics in a school. That's the most important thing when you judge in a school as far as academics, programs. Uh, Mountain View current, Kathy Jackson, my uh, SQS Baldridge uh, co-leader at our school, and Edwina Marujo, my assistant principal. Um, demographics, you have to look at that. Right now we have approximately 61% of our kids' parents are below the poverty level. Uh, Chaparral has 50%, Holden Middle School has 30%. If you look at the, uh, the information that Cheryl's presented tonight as well as mine, I think we have quite a bit of information in here, graphics and that, but you can see that Holman exceeds uh, way above AYP based on their demographics. Chaparral does a very good job with the, with the 50% of demographics they have below the poverty level. I think we do an outstanding job at Mountain View Middle School with the demographics that we have. We have approximately 63% of our staff members are tier three highly qualified instructors in their core content areas. That says a lot for a school as far as having certified and highly uh, endorsed teachers. That means they have to have a master's degree in the area in which they're teaching. Um, as we open up the page there, you can see the very front page. This is our scores in math reading. There's four areas that test you at MSBA. It's writing, it's science, it's math, and it's reading. The two areas that they really come after you at is the math and the reading. There's approximately nine areas, population areas that, and you can see that if you look at, there are 37 possible ways in which you can meet AYP. All nine of those things, if you miss just one of those areas, those, uh, you will not meet AYP. We missed it in three areas this year. We missed it uh, in the area of our special needs, uh, this students with disabilities areas, and we've missed that since day one of the school district and the school was set up with the state. Uh, the first year, 2005, that they started this, over half the schools in the state of New Mexico failed to meet AYP based on the special population groups. So the state pretty well set a lot of schools in the, in the districts in the state up for failure in one particular area, and that's the students with disabilities. It's nothing I can do to change it. I've voiced my opinion. I've talked to Ted in different occasions. Uh, Ms. Dr. Hunter will let you know that. Uh, but I feel like the state, uh, when you ask these kids uh, to progress at the same rates, not the starting points, but the same rates as all the other kids in, in your school, it's, it's, uh puts a lot of pressure on these kids and the parents to perform, and it's just unjust. I think there's other ways in which we could uh, probably measure these students to show progress. Uh, I've been in accountability states in Texas with the TAS, as well as in New Mexico. For 23 years, I've been involved in accountability. I've learned a lot over the years, and I've learned that the most important thing you can do in order to... Uh, move the school forward is to get the right people and the right programs. We're very blessed that we have the right central office people here to get to me the right people. We have highly qualified teachers that we are able to select. We have a great curriculum and we have great programs uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Hunter and Ms. Johnson. Uh, without central's office backing, even Mike Harris has supported me this year with the summer program, which I'll explain a little further as we go along, but it's similar to, and you know about it, it's content mastery in Texas. Uh, it's very similar to that, and it's one of our after-school and all-day programs. But if you flip it to page two there, real quickly, it says what Mountain View is doing to help students learn to succeed. You can go through all that stuff, the math and the reading and the other efforts, but I wanted to highlight a few things. Uh, we test all students uh, because we don't get our MSBA scores back by the time school starts up. So the first two weeks of school, we test every student who walks in our door in math and in reading. And from that testing, then we set their classes up. We, we self-design each and every one of those students' classes based on their test scores in math and reading. Um, we have two math classes for those who are in the in the beginning and nearing proficiency. They're required to take these classes twice a day. We also have a literacy, a language program, and we also have an English program, two hours a day they're required to take. Um, we, have, we utilize 20 minutes every day from the start of school. We call it drop everything and read. I know it sounds elementary. Everybody kind of in elementary school.
schools, pull out their little books and read. But we found that to be very beneficial for even our middle school kids and staff. Uh, every student, all 541 of them, open up their book, and that's either an AR book, and I don't even care if it's popular mechanics. As long as the kid is reading something, that's the most important thing. Um, let's see, we've gone through a lot of training, as you can see in the math. We've purchased document cameras this year. We've purchased, uh, for our math teachers, uh, in-focus overhead projectors, and we've purchased laptops. We've purchased, I believe, was it eight of them? Eight of them for all CMP math teachers this year. This came right out of our operational money. So that's why we're limping along. Isn't that right? We work with our money this year. But this is one of the things in which if we're going to introduce a program and make it effective, we've got to give the teachers the tools to do it. And so we did that this year, and we're very uh, fortunate that our math scores through the NEWAL testing, and you can see that as we go through there, it's kind of on the last page there, but you can see some of our scores. What we're trying to do is move the kids, our bubble kids, which are our nearing proficient kids. Uh, and those are the ones on page three there that are in red. And the ones in yellow there are showing that they've advanced and they're, they're proficient and advanced. They've cut the, the cutoff scores and they've improved to that point. Um, you can see the idea is those kids in the red are the ones that base whether school's really going to be efficient past AMO or AYP, you're trying to move those kids, a large portion of those kids into the yellow area. And you can look as far as from the bottom page three with our math and EWAL test in the falls. We have sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. You can see where they were in the fall. You can look and see how much yellows moved up in the winter for the sixth grade. Same thing with the fall and winter for seventh grade. And this is math, and same thing with the fall and winter in eighth grade. So our math program is working. We have a lot of teachers that really enjoy the CMP program. We were blessed to hire a teacher that's, that's done CMP math for six years in the state of Washington. And she has been our resource throughout the year. And she's also helped chaparral in the workshops that we've had. And she's answered her questions. And has really been a great person. And like I said, it's hiring <coughs> great people. You people are business people, professional people, you know you can't do a thing if you don't have the right people doing the right job. And uh, we have a lot of dedicated teachers there. You can see the areas of our problem is special ed, math, and reading. Um, and I have, a, I have a deal here that I looked up today that I thought was pretty interesting. It's in one of these deals here. It shows what the state, I think it's page two, the second one says 2007 Quick Facts. This is right off the TED uh, website. You can look uh, at areas like 2005 when it first started, making AYP in 2005, 47% uh, made it, next year 45, and the th in 2007, 45 again. But look at the ones not making it. And the, and the main reason they're not making it is because of special ed populations, not the core content areas of math and reading. We are very low in math, but we've got programs we've initiated last this year, we have a trans math program, we have a CMP program that our teachers have been highly trained in. We, uh, every day, our teachers get together and discuss what they can do. They glean little things from each other and they're able to really push forward our kids in those areas. Um, we have some programs that you were talking a little bit about the academy at Chaparral and I thought that was really interesting. We've been doing the summit program for five years. This program is open to all kids in our school from 7.30 in the morning to 5 o'clock at night. Uh, this program is, is not a, a software-driven program. It's a teacher working with a student one-on-one -on -one or in small groups in their core content areas based on the curriculum. Um, we have, I would say on average, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd say on average we have anywhere from 20 to 25 kids every day after school in there. We do academic improvement plans for the for the school, and every school in the state of New Mexico has to do that. And what we do is we, we look at the kids' progress academically throughout the year and come around December in the first semester. We meet with the parents. We have them sign a contract and say, you will be in the summer. And these parents sign it, the student signs it. As far as transportation, that's their baby. They have to take care of that. We make sure that we don't take the kids home, but it's that parent's obligation to make sure they're there. 